My name is Nathan Aldrich, and I'm Sustainability Coordinator for Auxiliary Services. The term permaculture was coined by Bill Mollison and David Holmgren, two Australians in the 1970s. Uh, since then, it has been applied to gardens and agricultural systems. Uh, the word itself is a combination of the words permanent and agriculture in its original inception. However, the word has been redefined as a portmanteau of permanent and culture to reflect that permaculture is not just about gardens. It's about creating a regenerative culture. To address individuals who would suggest that permaculture gardens are unkempt and messy, um, I would suggest that we're talking about an entirely, we're, we're coming from entirely different paradigms. Um, most conventional gardens that I've seen are planted in straight rows. There's only a few different kinds of crops. They're all annual vegetables. They're grouped together by type of crop. Um, so they're very neat and orderly. They look like an Excel spreadsheet. Um, permaculture gardens are designed by around mimicking natural systems. So we have, uh, we have food crops growing on the ground as ground covers. There's no bare soil in most permaculture systems. Um, we have vegetables growing underneath fruit trees. Uh, there's a lot happening. They're incredibly biodiverse and resilient. And so it's, not, it's certainly not uh, neat rows, but I do think it's very beautiful. Perennial vegetables are essential in permaculture design, but they can be difficult to track down sometimes. Uh, luckily, here in Western Massachusetts, we have many, many uh, permaculturalists, nurseries, and growers who offer these plants for sale commercially. Um, we're very lucky in this part of the country. Um, others might not be so lucky. Uh, and so I think the best way to find these crops is to search around the internet, find folks who label themselves as permaculture gardens, um, perhaps get onto a permaculture listserv, and uh, many of these folks are probably, would probably be very happy to have you come over and share some of their plants. Um, permaculture systems are resilient and abundant, and so I suspect they probably have a few plants to spare. My name is Josephine Nowitz. I'm a student here at UMass studying Operation Management, and I'm the Multimedia and Marketing Outreach Facilitator for UMass Permaculture. In 2010, in John Gerber's Sustainable Agriculture class, he proposed a project to the students to find a way to change the world and to change the UMass campus community. Um, a group of students got together, and they decided that they'd like to grow food here on campus in the form of permaculture gardening. They found a lot outside of Franklin Dining Commons and they asked administration if they could grow a permaculture garden here. And administration said, we've actually planned to put a parking lot there, unfortunately. You cannot grow a permaculture garden here right now. But some time went by and administration decided to move the parking lot elsewhere and asked the students if they would be interested in growing a permaculture garden here. Permaculture is a vision for creating more sustainable world. It's about meeting human needs while increasing ecosystem health and also sharing resources. My name is Kathleen Doherty. I'm a senior at UMass studying environmental design and I'm a student intern on the UMass Permaculture Committee. For me, permaculture is about meeting human needs not only for food, but also water, shelter, energy, and community, while also regenerating the ecosystem. Permaculture follows three guiding ethics, which is earth care, people care, and resource share. And none of these is valued more than any of the others. They're all weighted equally. So the idea is to take care of the earth and to take care of people in a way that's both just and sustainable over the long term. So permaculture originated in the 1970s, but it's just now starting to gain momentum both nationally in the United States and internationally. I think a lot of the reason for that is it is a way of reconnecting people to the land and to their food and to each other. And I think especially in the United States, there's a disconnect between what people eat and their health. And of course, that's an important connection, but people have lost their awareness of the connection between 
your own health, what you're eating, where it comes from, who grows it, and uh, the community around you. So I think now more than ever people need permaculture to provide that connection. The reason that permaculture has just recently become nationally recognized is because over the past 30, 40 years, permaculturalists all over the world have been building a foundation for permaculture. And here at UMass, since we're on a public university campus, we're really starting to build the house for that foundation. And it was really important to do all the research and observing nature and site analysis that the permaculturalists have done over the past 40 years to build this foundation so that we can learn from it and spread it throughout the nation. The Campus Champions of Change Challenge that UMass Permaculture was just a part of really helped to bring UMass Permaculture and permaculture in general to a national level and even a global level. So one big challenge of permaculture design is just the initial time investment. Um, in the long term, a permaculture garden is extremely low maintenance, but the initial time investment, especially to work with the site conditions that you start with and to analyze what will work best on your site, it takes a long time. So for a lot of people, that's what's intimidating about it is go out into your yard and you can imagine a big garden, but the actual process of designing and installing that garden takes a really long time but the rewards are definitely worth it. Another challenge is um, the dual goals of food production but also ecological remediation can be a challenge for people who haven't done that before. Even when it's something as simple as, there's too much water on my site, how can I get rid of this water? Just um, trying to heal the land through garden design is challenging if you haven't done it before. I first heard about permaculture in a class that I took for my major called Sustainable Cities. Um, the following summer I took a permaculture design course, so I'm now a per certified permaculture designer. And I heard about this UMass permaculture committee pretty late in the game. I was already a senior at UMass when I applied. And I went through the application process, I had an interview. And when I found out that I was accepted for the internship, I was pretty excited. And my work with the committee so far has been really rewarding. And I've made a lot of close friendships, so I'm definitely glad that I found this and have it in my life. I heard about permaculture when Ryan Harb, the Chief Sustainability Coordinator here at UMass, came to my marketing class looking for marketing interns for this new permaculture garden. He did a presentation and it just, it made sense. I mean, growing your own food right outside the dining commons organically and having the students eat this food is really important to me and something that we should be doing here at UMass. So I went and I applied and I interviewed and I got the position as a marketing intern last year. And I've been with UMass Permaculture for about a little over a year now and I'm now a facilitator for UMass Permaculture the committee. Being a business student, it's really important to me personally that the corporation that I decide to work for has good ethics and sustainability and green-minded corporations are really what I'm looking for. So when Ryan Harb came to my marketing class, gave the presentation um, looking for a marketing intern for this new green sustainability initiative, I was very interested and hooked and it's just exciting that all these different kinds of students from different majors and different backgrounds, we have English students, we have um, biology students, we have business majors working together, creating this sustainable system. So what really excites me about permaculture is that it proposes to meet human needs. I've always been interested in environmentalism, but I could never really get behind the type of environmentalism that's all about preservation and all about keeping these natural places pristine because any human intervention is damaging. And what's different about permaculture is that it integrates humans with the natural environment. It uses nature to meet our needs, but then we pay the system back in terms of 
maintenance and ecological restoration, and as well as um, regeneration. So what got me excited about the UMass Permaculture Committee is that it does all this, it accomplishes the goals of permaculture by creating a closed loop system where students grow the food in the garden, they use compost from the food waste from the dining commons and then the product is the food which then goes back into the dining commons. Um, and the way we do this, we're organized into a student committee which students either receive pay or they receive credit for being on the committee and the entire organization is completely student run. We have three staff facilitators and everyone else is a student. There's about 15 of us. We also have student garden leaders who receive credit just for working in the garden. And we have an on-campus club called Friends of UMass Permaculture as well. And that's, that for me is the big difference with this initiative is that it meets all these goals of permaculture in a, com in a way that's completely student driven, that empowers students to grow their own food and create this closed loop system. So in fall 2010, the UMass Permaculture Committee sheet mulched this grass lawn right outside Franklin Dining Commons. And sheet mulching involves putting down compost, cardboard or newspaper, and then putting wood chips over it, and then leaving it for about six months. This increases the nutrients in the soil and rebuilds the soil, builds it up, regenerating it. And then during um, the winter of 2010 into early spring, the committee was designing the Franklin Permaculture Garden, looking at different plants and relationships and which plants go, go well with other plants. Really designing, we also held a design charrette in spring of 2011, um, inviting people from the local community from all over Massachusetts, anyone who was interested in coming, to give input on this design. So we would have student input. We had about a hundred people come on a Saturday afternoon mm -hmm. for our design charrette. And then we created a final design for the garden and implemented it. We started planting in May of 2011 and all throughout the summer. We planted plants specifically that would create um, a large yield in the fall when the students return to school, the fall 2011. And once fall 2011 came around, we, have, we had a beautiful garden right outside the dining commons, 10 feet away. When talking about permaculture, it's important to notice and note that you are trying to fulfill human needs while also fulfilling earth care needs. and. Um, so you have to do a lot of site analysis when designing your garden. You have to um, analyze where the sun is coming from and how much shade you have in certain areas, what plants that you have, do you already have there. Um, you also have to look into human circulation. Um, so when we were designing the Franklin Garden, we noticed that students like to cut right diagonally across this large lawn. So we kept that path there so students could feel more comfortable about entering the garden and feel ownership of it. Um, we kept some of the plants. We have three large trees that provide some shade during the summertime, which is a nice area to sit and have classes and just relax. And we also kept some other plants. UMass Permaculture Initiative is a collaboration between the students and administration. We have about 12 students on the committee right now and three staff members that are hired full-time by Auxiliary Services. So Auxiliary Services is funding UMass Permaculture. The Franklin Permaculture Garden has been established for about a year now and we have harvested a thousand pounds of fruits, vegetables and herbs that have all gone into the Franklin Dining Commons. 10 feet away. The Franklin Permaculture Garden is basically a three season garden. During the winter we have a small hoop house with kale and microgreens, um, but the spring is really when it starts to pick up. We have a lot of perennial vegetables that come up in the spring, including asparagus, onions, garlic. Um, and then during the summer is when we start planting annuals and we try and time those so that they'll be ready mostly for the fall when the students come back. 
But during the summer, we also have some fruit on the fruit trees, um, regular annual plants, tomatoes, um, kale. kale, lettuce, sorrel, other types of annual vegetables. And then in the fall, last year we had a ton of butternut squash, um, as well as most of our annual vegetables came up in the fall so that they would be ready for the students to eat when they came back to school. So the Franklin Permaculture Garden is divided into several sections. In our orchard area we have um, peach trees, pear trees, um, I think there's a persimmon tree in there as well and we're trying quince. Um, then there's the edible landscape area which is designed kind of to use companion planting with perennial, ve per yeah, perennial vegetables and shrubs. Um, so that one is kind of the most true to permaculture principles. It uses companion planting and uh, fruit tree guilds, that kind of thing, to demonstrate permaculture principles. Then we have the annual beds in the center and herbs and medicinal um, area, as well as the woodland edge area which is designed to mimic the edge of a forest. So the garden gets a lot of use not only for food production but also for gathering. There's a couple tables where students can sit and read or they can eat lunch there. Um, we also get a lot of visiting tour groups so it definitely has an educational purpose. So in our edible landscape section of the Franklin Permaculture Garden we're trying to demonstrate some specific permaculture techniques. One of which is a uh, um, guild of companion plants. So basically you'll plant plants together that will help support each other. So for example underneath a fruit tree, uh, fruit trees need a lot of nitrogen to produce their fruit. So underneath a fruit tree you could plant a nitrogen fixer such as a Siberian pea shrub or even clover which also functions as a ground cover. So you have your nitrogen right there. You could also plant uh, what's called a dynamic accumulator, which means the leaves, or sorry, the roots pull up a lot of nutrients and then they bring them into the leaves so you can use the leaves as mulch. Comfrey is a good example of a dynamic accumulator. Then you can also have a ground cover to cover the bare soil, maintain the nutrients, the water, the soil temperature. Um, so to some people this area looks a little chaotic but it's designed intentionally so that the plants can support each other. The UMass Permaculture Garden at Franklin, D.C. has um, a leaf shape to it. So the leaf is in the center of this originally grass lawn and on the outsides of this leaf are planted perennial vegetables and plants. Um, eventually we we are planning to um, increase the amount of perennial plants in this garden, but we have annual plants in the center of this garden within the leaf shape because we'd like to have some sort of food production uh, yields within the first few years. And then after a few years, the perennial ve vegetables will be more mature and will be able to yield a lot more food. Before I got involved with the UMass Permaculture Committee, I had a little bit of plant knowledge. My mom has a vegetable garden, um, but I had mostly only been exposed to annual vegetables. So when I came here and started working in the garden, it was like, what's a sorrel? What's a Siberian pea shrub? Um, but the more we work, the more we get to interact with the plants, the more we learn about what each plant does, what its function is, what it needs. And I think that's a great advantage of working with the committee is that people who otherwise would not have any plant knowledge and would not need any plant knowledge are learning a lot of details about how to grow food, what a, what a garden needs, what each plant needs, and it's a great resource if you are not studying something that's related to that. The Campus Champions of Change Challenge is a competition that hosted by the White House that UMass Permaculture was just a part of. We applied for this award back in the fall of 2011 and we received notice from the White House that we were chosen out of um, 1,400 applicants all over the nation to be the top 15 finalists. 
the award was about winning the future. It was about um, changing your campus positively. And um, we had about a week to gather as many votes as we possibly could from faculty, community members, students, anybody, and um, be allowed, be invited to go to the White House. So after a week of tabling and dining commons and a creative marketing strategy, um, getting as many people involved as possible, working like crazy, we ended up gathering 60,000 votes and won the competition. So we got to go to the White House, um, we got a tour of the White House, and we also got to be part of the events, the Campus Champions of Change. And we also, along with four other student groups from other schools, were invited to go to the White House and be part of this event. So we got to talk about permaculture and bring permaculture to a national level. And it was just incredible because we have been we have been only part of permaculture for a few years, but people around the world have been doing permaculture for 40, 30 years, and it's finally reaching a national level. So we're so proud to be working with permaculturalists all over the world. We got a lot of support from them. Seeing as this is a big collaboration between administration and the students, administration has allowed us to create a new permaculture garden here on campus each year indefinitely. Um, next fall, the fall of 2012, we, we plan to branch out into the community and teach others how to create permaculture gardens in their own backyards and show them that it's really simple to do. Um, we also plan to have more academics revolving around permaculture for the first time. We're going to have an introduction to permaculture class, with, which is a 75 person class this fall. And then we're also planning to have a, another UMass Permaculture Committee in the spring for students who are interested in getting involved in UMass Permaculture. The Franklin Permaculture Garden was really a pioneering garden and basically it was a chance for us to prove to UMass that permaculture works. So I think we've sufficiently done that and this year we're starting a second permaculture garden near the Berkshire Dining Commons which is in Southwest. Um, it's going to be an interesting project because the site has some very serious challenges. The soil is extremely compacted, very unhealthy, and also the, the site is in almost complete shade. So this design was a chance for us to delve more into the regenerative aspect of permaculture. Um, it may or may not produce food this year, but we're hoping that it can serve as a demonstration to students and the community about the regenerative power of permaculture. For campuses who are interested in doing a project similar to the one we're doing, we are hosting a Permaculture Your Campus conference at UMass uh, this June. It's going to be June 20th to 22nd, uh, 2012. That's going to be right here on the UMass campus. If you're interested in signing up for that, uh, you can visit www.umasspermacultureconference.com. Um, that's specifically for dining commons uh, managers, auxiliary services, people from other campuses who want to replicate this type of project that we're doing here. Um, for more information about UMass Permaculture and for additional resources about permaculture in general, you can visit our website, uh, umasspermaculture.com. And if you're around UMass and if you're interested in volunteering, we have regular volunteer hours all through April, every Tuesday through Thursday morning, 9 to 10.30 at Franklin. Or if you want to help install the new Berkshire Permaculture Garden, that's every Friday from 9 to 1. Um, all this can be found on our website. We also have a Facebook and a Twitter if you're interested in keeping up with us.